right. Hi, everybody. My name is Aaron Shane. Welcome to Habitat Now. I have the honor today of welcoming two artists uh, who are visit we're visiting with flying across the pond to the Czech Republic of Vladimir Klumpar and Matthias Pavlik. Uh, we've had Hello. these two artists in our family for a very long time, and uh, we're bringing Matthias in. We have Vladimir for a long time. We're bringing Matthias into our family, so we're honored to have them both today. They were giving a, a dual presentation, so this one might go a little longer than normal, so I appreciate your patience, but exposing them both at once is, is a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm really, really excited to learn a lot. If you're joining us on YouTube, uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and hit this bell. And I'm going to figure out how to stream this live on Facebook at the same time sometime soon. So uh, you'll be enjoying these live. Uh, without further ado, say hello, uh, Vladimir and Matthias, and, uh, and uh, say hi. Go ahead. <laughs> hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> we are the mother and son. Yes, Just to make it clear. <laughs> hi. Okay, guys. Well, I will. I will start with the uh, presentation now. I want to wish everybody happy holidays, and I will. I will give Matthias, um, Vladimira, and Matthias the uh, um, the power once we're ready for their side of the presentation. So, I'm going to take over your screens. Okay. And we're going to show a couple of videos of the artists as well. So, let me get my PowerPoint going. Here we go. Welcome to Habitat Now. Thank you for joining us today for the Two Generations Habitat Now. I want to mention, <clears throat> as, as many of you may already know, um, their presentations are on theglassartfair.com, which is still up for the rest of the month. We are trying to get some attention from the other art fairs going on in December in Florida. So this will be up to the end of the month. You can see both of their presentations. This one is behind me. So I'll be showing first a video. Uh, Vladimir will be speaking over top of this video um, because we pulled out the audio as it was not in English. So Vladimir, I will, I will start uh, the presentation now. Okay. You know, as, as a child, I was growing up, I, I love the beautiful river, and maybe it was the first time when I got in touch with, it was not exactly, the, the water was something for me like the glass, you know, when I was looking at the, at the stones and as, as they were, as well, as they, they, I, they put them into, into water, and the hue of the water was changing the, the, the color and then also I, I lost the reflections and all that what comes out comes with the water and it was maybe uh, first time when I it was an inspiration for later for for working with glass because it was closest because I think that the water is closest to the to the glass and uh, this is a after all, after all my, my journey of living in different countries, I was born in Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia at the time, studied in Jelaznibro, and then in Prague with Professor Lebensky, and then now we ended up... It's, it's funny because this studio actually was... Uh, they, my parents at the time, they were together, my father Michael Pavlik was also a glass artist, and um, they bought this place kind of in this really dilapidated state as a storage um, close to Jelazny Brod, which is a, a really well-known kind of glass area where Lubinsky and Kristova started this cast glass technique. So it was, they needed a place to store their art when, before they had the shows. And then it just started to become more and more of a, <laughs> of a home. <laughs> and as, as I was reconstructing step by step this old pub with the, with the dance hall. Then we will, now we have storage. This is actually our, our candy store. We have, we have, we are storing glass, glass. We are buying in the, in the factory, but they are producing the glass. And then this is, what is the result from, <laughs> from our. Um, so it's, it's a studio. <laughs> It's, it's a little a, bit, I'm sorry, that because it's because before I, I had it, uh, this video, yeah, video it's a little here, actually what, what, what's going to happen here with this video is that you, you are going to see the process of casting a small piece. It's from start to finish. From start to finish. Okay. And this is actually, this is uh, the work I got. Is, sometimes I work with very organic shapes and sometimes in this case I was using a, this is a, for constant, in, for construction, I found this foil and I was working, I'm working with imprinting this, this patterns into a clay 
and then actually in plaster, plaster. Oh, that's, that's really cool. And so, then, um, so here, here you see the process. First, I cut the prop, the the foil. foil, and then I'm working with clay, making a sh was a shape, shaping it into into uh, design I, or into what I want to into into shape I want, hmm. and. Um, a great video <laughs> so that's the first first step it's actually no first is drawing the second is i make make a model out of clay and sometimes you spend a lot of time bending the yeah, first I, I once i know what i want then we are making a we are doing a, a, a mold out of silica sand and plaster, special plaster. So like a dental plaster. Dental plaster, so which withstands a high temperature. And uh, here we are preparing it for making mold. Hmm. Before we are, plaster is uh, tricky sometimes because if you don't do all the procedures, you can end up with a real big mess. Yeah. Um, so you have to make sure that everything's locked in, um, and that your whatever you're putting the surface on doesn't float up. You've had some. Yeah, really sometimes it can happen. It's so <laughs> it's a disaster, and you have uh, plaster everywhere. At the first, it's really it's a liquid. Then it then it becomes a it hardens with chemical process. So here we are. <laughs> Looks we heavy. Are <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And here it got stuck to the table, so it's, sometimes you have to kind of <laughs> give it a nudge. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we made it. <laughs> right. What so now I have to dig out, dig out the clay out of this. Uh -huh. Get it out. Gotcha. Can you have to do, do it carefully so that so carefully uh, so I don't, I don't, I don't break. Disrupt the disrupt pattern. The pattern right. and, hey. So are, you able, one, are you able? Are you able to use the clay over and over again? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, most yeah, of the yeah. time. Sometimes it's messed, messed up, and, and then I have to take off, which is really sometimes ooh, tricky to get off the 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 the, the plastic. Mm -hmm. And now is the important part also when I have to uh, like a retouching. It's, it's like a well, we call it retouching. Retouch, retouch, like retouching, retouching, it. retouching. And this, this make it as smooth as possible because then it's gonna be cutting and polishing. So if it's really rough, then it's it a, lot more work. a lot more work mm -hmm. than cold working process. So we have to fill it up with glass and then put it into kill, bring up to the temperature. This is actually when we are opening it. It's a very important. It's a moment like nervous baby moment because it's always like, what happens in there? <laughs> <laughs> made it. Did, did is it, it in it? peace or not? Yeah, right. This yeah, because many times it happens that actually it's not. It's it's broken. It's cracked. Mm -hmm. So here is the time when we dig yeah. it out. For me, it's like a like an anthropology trying to find a fossil. You have to like slowly <laughs> reveal. <laughs> this is this is this is in this case. It's it's about it's after a week of. Being in the kiln, ten days. Ten mm -hmm. days, no, ten days. Yeah, ten days. But before we made the plaster, we had it has to dry up. Uh, I mm -hmm. had to make a model. So the process, it, by this time, it's all. It's been already like good three weeks. Yeah, wow. I work on it really like in consecutively. And this is almost the halfway point, you know, or it's a little over the halfway point. It's like a third into the process. Yeah, and it's a, it's a very small piece, so it means that it, everything is much easier. Then we bring it to our cold working studio. But the, what I wanted to say that, you know, people say that glass artist, what is glass artist? Glass artist is uh, if some, somebody is blowing glass. Somebody, is, somebody knows how to cut the glass. Someone knows how to make a mold. Make a mold. Someone knows how to blow glass. It's like each, each, each uh, sequence, each, 
Each profession has, or it, it has its own needs to have its own skill. It's like you know someone who knows how to blow glass doesn't know how to cut the glass usually. Or I have no idea. I always admire people who can make in hot shop great shape, beautiful piece of glass. So it's it's like we are all glass artists, but each of us we have our own particular skills. Particular it's a, a multi discipline. Yeah. Uh, and then cast class, because you have to... And cast class is also a... Teamwork. Teamwork, yeah. In a Beautiful. Way. Beautiful. Look at that. Here we are. This is the end. <laughs> this is it. It's funny with... And then it goes to the gallery. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. It's it's a lot of polishing and, and cleaning, I see. Wow. No, very, it's very, a cast cool. glass. It's a long... It's very, 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 very uh, complicated process. This, gotcha. is, this was a very small piece, but if it's in a large scale, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So I have another uh, video here to show. This is, uh, this is, uh, Matthias says, let me see if I have some comments in the so, chat here. I'm looking like uh, Jean Cousteau or something. <laughs> you look like, yeah, you look like Jon Snow, ready to go, <laughs> save the world. Uh, <laughs> Question: Are you are you guys are you using water based clay? Is it clay? Uh, yeah, we use water based clay. Yeah, gotcha. it's like it's like a basic for, mo um, just, for modeling for, clay. For, it's for, not for high, artists, yeah, artists, for it's not high temperature clay. No, no, no. Okay, and the second it's question: is, it's, it's much, it's much smoother, and, and sometimes the clay, like you, you, we have like different types of clay. Like some clay is like really fresh and wet. And then some parts of the sculpture use like a little bit harder clay because it holds better. Uh -huh. Or you can always use a fresh clay and then let it like sit for a while. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, you have to know your clay, I guess, a little gotcha. bit. Gotcha. You get, you get more, more experiences. Where do you get but your... It's not, it's not ceramic clay. But it's not ceramic, 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 ceramic clay. Right. Where, do you, for, where do you guys for, usually get for, your, your glass from? It's a... That's why we are actually in this region. We are in a good place because they're, they're, it's a it's a factory where they are specializing on producing glass for casting and for making beads, glass beads. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, they they produce glass as a material for for Yeah. There's also it's one of the few places where there's still leaded glass. So there's different there's like different compounds in the glass. Um, and we get it from two different kind of producers here. One is the small producer, Bruno Baya, um, and he he uses soda dresso, and his colors are very interesting. They they tend to have um, kind of these changing properties, and as we go through the slides, we'll get an idea of kind of uh, which ones are his and which ones are leaded glass. But leaded glass, on the other hand, has melting very easy. It's, it melts much nicer. It's a softer glass for polishing and cutting. Um, and it optically, uh, because of the lead, has uh, it's much kind of nicer. It, it, um, this, when it hits the sun, it has uh, kind of like a diamondy kind of crystal sparkle. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Right. Optical quality. Yeah. All right, we're gonna play uh, your video now. I hope the audio will work. I'll double check it on my end to make sure that it does. I will make sure the volume's all the way up. My inspiration comes from my surroundings. A lot of it comes from my memory, um, from childhood, from traveling, um, from books, from whatever is current. Um, but a lot of it comes from nature, like organic forms, um, Trees, water, glass reminds me of water a lot, wind, and sometimes I have a real focus and an idea and sometimes it just comes to me. Um, it's very organic flow.
You know, what fascinates me about glass the most is um, it's ever-changing quality. You know, when light hits it, it's always changing. You never have it. It's like a cloud. It's always moving and changing. Um, the light hits it in a way that, that, that it'll never be again. And I just think that's amazing. You know, it's hypnotizing. You know, my focus is lately really, or since the beginning has been this kind of tension between organic and geometric forms, the way that uh, the two kind of fight each other, but in the end, they're balanced. And I love that. I love that, that she can do that with class. We were really excited uh, that I would bring closely with uh, with Peppa, who's a master glass cutter, and we were excited to have finished. <laughs> <laughs> the dog project. Oof. Um, yeah, so it started almost a year ago, and it's not finished yet, but we're. We've hit a milestone, which is it came out of the kiln. In the beginning, we were I was giving it a 70-30 chance that it would survive. And it did. Um, and it's kind of really so pushing the limits. So far, yeah. The, the, it's, now it's out, and actually we're just going to start because in the cutting and polishing, but it's very it's, exciting. So it's a large, large piece, and <laughs> we'll see what happens. That was great. What a beautiful collection of visuals. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, well, thank you. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sharing and have you guys take over here. So feel free to start steering your screen. And thanks again for joining us today. Okay. All right. Let's see. Do you guys see my screen? We see your screen. We're looking for you to launch the presentation now. All right. Sounds good. Somewhere on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So here we go. Great. We're ready yeah, to go. Yeah. Ready to go. Here I am as a student or freshly just out of school. And this is my first work. In the, we are talking about 80s. I, was, I finished the school at 1981 in Prague. And these were my first pieces. I was at the time trying to work in, it, was, it was more with the optical qualities of God. And um, this, is, this is my first casting I have ever made in Zelazny Brod. At the time also at the stu studio where Bisto and Nebensky were. And this is the first time when I was using a color, which was at the time really in Czech Republic, we didn't use much of colors. Mm -hmm. And then I met Matthias' father, who was at the time a, who, who, is a, who was at the time one of the first class, our, our, our people who worked with glass. And we moved to Massachusetts. We bought a farm, old farmhouse. And this was our studio of barn. We had quite a great studio for cutting glass because Michal was working with, with uh, optical glass. So we were, so uh, I, when I came to the United States, I didn't have a place 
I did a kiln for casting. Michal had an annealing kiln, and he was working with the glass from a shot. So I was using a bars from shot glass, and I was I was fusing them together. And I was playing at the time with a with inserting gold and uh, using copper so, powders and silver. And I was just it was it was interesting. It was a period of time. And then I was then I this was this is from my studio in Massachusetts in Massachusetts in the barn. And then later on, I had a first kiln for casting, and that was actually, I always wanted to cast glass, because for me it was closest to a, I, I thought that it was sculptor, sculptor, and and wanted to work in more as a, in freedom, and not to be, it was very interesting for a while to work with me, for me, in this inner space, but I was really, I was leaning more to somewhere to sculpture work, and that's the cast, that's, that's what, Casting uh, is permitting. Cast glass, casting cast glass is permitting. And this were my first. I was I was inspired by the by nature. I was I was trying to work with the organic, mostly organic shapes because I was living in the nature. I I'm passionate gardener and uh, and. Uh, yeah, and, sometimes uh, there's a old family story that my. Dad would need help or something, and they'd get up in the morning and go. Uh, and then my mom would like sidetrack and go to the garden <laughs> and end up staying there for, for the whole day. Yeah, and my dad was always like, ah! I was just like, let's check it out. And like, three hours later, I would be still in the garden. But then I was, now I was, I was, this was, this was my work. I started then uh, working uh, in castings, and I was at the time experimenting also with other materials. I had a lot of. The I have a lot of pieces that got broken and didn't work because I was alone there for that. I had a, I had to, so I started to embedded glass. And I was working on our, our, our reverse. I was using glass as a detail, and then I was surrounding it by plaster, and uh, and plaster was actually the main material. I was at the time I got a grant for Paula Krasner Foundation, and it was for me for one year. I was free to do whatever I was pleased, and I so I was I was working on these drawings and work with plaster, where glass was most for most of the time was just a I was using the my catastrophe. I was uh, using the parts of glass, and but but then later on here is the example that, that I was at the time I was working with plaster, and and um, and uh, it was just a it was. I'm sorry, my English. Is you're, you're fine. So, sorry. so it was then inspired. My plaster pieces were the later later on. I sorry, sorry. I actually I I was going back to them and I made them in glass. This was the end of our, after almost 20 years of being in Massachusetts, living in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. now. Yeah. This was the end of our studio there, but the best little man, she, she's there in one of the guys. She was at the time, I think, a senior director in, in some art school in Worcester, and and they took, we, we actually gave them as a present our studio, most of our studio, which we had in Massachusetts. We were living a little bit of parallel lives. Yeah, and actually, so, that's one of the main reasons why I think they left. Uh, was because of that photo there of the dreary Massachusetts uh, and the long eight month winters. <laughs> and we were oscillating in the winter towards Mexico, which was for me very interesting. It, I think that it did help me with the changing my my perception of color, mostly. In Mexico, we have met Paul Marioni because they and Anna Trotner, they live, they, 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 they're not in the same town, but close to us, so we had this glass community there, but none of us was working with glass in Mexico. We were, it was time for us to do drawing, paintings, living, inspired by tropical plants, by the colors. And, uh, and uh, I had a studio where I would be just uh, making models. I was, it was like to think, to draw, to make, I was making small models in, in clay or in, uh, in, um, in what, in what, in 
faster and then I was traveling. My suitcases were always full of marbles instead of clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Traveling with marbles, usually in the States when they were like in the customs where I was like, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It was my inspiration, my, my half a year or four months of working. But I was doing a lot of drawings and a lot of paintings over there at that time. And it was great. It was a, it was, it helped me to, to it was like mental training and for, for what I was doing then back in in states or later later in, in Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. And so this is this is this was inspired by by tropics, you know, these these shapes, tropical gardens, tropical plants. And I brought it with me either to Massachusetts or then later to Czech Republic again. And and this is it's still inside. <laughs> I love love for color, love for organic shape. It's a beautiful piece. And this is what this was. This was one of the first, which then later was led leading to a, the whole series of this kind of work. And then, you know, after almost twenty years of being outside of this country, I had to come back because of first of my mother, my aging mother. And and I wanted to work on the larger scale with, in casting. And at the time, it was Czech Republic is the, is the country where it's possible. This was my Prague studio. At first, we were really, we had a studio and an apartment in Prague, and this was my Prague studio. But as I was starting to work in a large scale, I had to, this was more for, again, thinking, drawing and making small scale pieces. But then we later on, we had to, we had this, we, have, we were moving up here, where mm, we are now. Which is north, it's like 60 kilometers north of Prague. Yeah. Kind of in the foothills yeah. before the mountains. So these are, this is, uh, this was like, a, you know, being in states in Mexico and Portugal and then back in Czech Republic, it's, it's like everything is melting inside. Sometimes I feel like it's like, and, and then comes out, I don't know where it comes from. It comes out, these shapes, these colors. Mm. <laughs> it's really nice series, I like these. This was probably, this was the, the time along the ocean when I was walking around and I would see all these shells and creatures you could see in the ocean. And you didn't, these were also done by clay or with wax? It's a, a, no, the first was actually plaster. This was plaster. This was plaster. That's the most, and this was, this is clay. This I was just, I just wanted to be playful and try to, it was working like a, I think it was a, based on a B, B, B. This here I was starting already to work in a larger scale. That's where I make, um, I make, I make usually out of plaster first my models. It's a big piece. This is about, this was a beard. It's about almost like two meters high. This, this is then you can see the size of those pieces. But for this this kind of work, this size, it's a I need a studio and I need to I need to work. It's a teamwork. I collaboration. It, I couldn't it, I couldn't do it as what you have seen on the video. I I can sometimes I love to work in a small small scale because then I have it's like playful and I'm really in touch with that whole process and I love to do it. But then when I'm working in a large scale. Media and it, the process is so long that I'm working simultaneously on more than one piece. And sometimes you, I forget almost what's in the plaster, what's in the, no, what I see, what's in the plaster, okay. But, you know, just to, to dry the mold in for large piece, large scale pieces, large scale pieces takes up to months or yeah, even more. more. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's another month in the kiln. And by the time I'm working on different pieces, and, and it's, so the process is so long that it's like then really when we open the kiln, it's 
excavating and I was like, oh, yeah, it looks like this. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> a it's discovery good. every time, a new discovery. Yeah, it's like a rediscovering. And, um, and then it's, it's, it's a process of polishing. It's again, it's, it's, it's always changing, always challenging, surprising. And it's sometimes it's horrible. I just want to give up. Uh, breaking and breaking. I said, like, that's it. I'm finished. I'm going planting. I'm going to go and plant potatoes. And no, and, <laughs> so I'm threatening that I'm leaving planting to plant potatoes and beans and live in all the land. But it's a lifelong love story, me and glass. <laughs> I got a question from somebody. Uh, for your larger pieces, do you use clay or lost wax to make your casting molds? Depends on the shape. This is this is actually this one. These are also quite large, but it's a clay for this. Sometimes I use plaster. Well, it's clay with the raster of the material. Yeah, in printed. But uh, for some pieces, it has to be done out of uh, wax. Wax. Yeah. And you use you use a um, it's like a silica. You first have to encase it and then take out the piece. And yeah. And it's, a, it's a similar process to a brown casting. Gotcha. And then I got a qu question for you too. Did the work of other Czech artists in the '80s and '90s, like Halava, Siegler, Elias, Senior, influence your work, or was it mostly? Siegler? Yeah, you know, I'm a student of Professor Libinsky. Right. I know you're a student of Libinsky, but did the other, yeah. any, any other artists influence your work too that were in the area? This, this year, here, I'm sorry, now, now this is my biggest piece I have actually produced. I was, a, it was a, it was my commission for, uh, it was very interesting for Buddha, for, Thai, for Thailand, for one monastery. And I was, I said, okay, so the, I, I agreed that I will be. Okay. I was there. Uh, okay. we'll I was that we will do it in our studio with, with my with the guys with whom I'm working. For these guys. The two guys, and then we were casting one part in, in another studio. It was a very interesting project. It was my. It's actually it was the biggest. We, here we got a delegation the in, in the center. Is a monk who came to our studio all the way from Thailand to see how it's wow. progressing in Buddha. And then this Buddha, then, then, then we were installing it, which was, it was a very, very powerful, very interesting experience for me. They were me. still but building the... They are still building now a stupa above it. This was when I got a gift. I was <laughs> giving him gifts and then receiving gifts from them. It was, it was, it was a very interesting experience for me. Wonderful. And the Buddha was... I think that the, this Buddha is quite a uh, unique thing, unique, because this one is more than like 10, 11, 12 foot, maybe more yeah. tall in glass. It was, it's quite something that, and this is inspiration from that. <laughs> this is my version of Buddha, <laughs> where I was working on first in clay, and this is in glass. <laughs> so it's now my Buddha. And my, my little Buddha in the studio, and I think I'm going to make more in the future. I would like to make, I get got inspired, but this commission commission actually was kind of blessing for us because we were able to construct this bigger, larger kiln, which is now for us. Uh, it gives us opportunity to explore, experiment more and have it more under the control. Yeah, and really be able to uh, just do it all in shop. And I have to outsource some of the process because it was. And this is my gardening. This is me happy in the garden, and when it's cold and win winter time, <laughs> it's my, it's my, it's my. It gives me happiness. It brings me happiness to. Sometimes I just play school and I make I make flowers for myself, <laughs> and then for some other people if they like it. <laughs> I saw that piece. Could uh, do any? Do, can your larger pieces survive safely outdoors? Well, now I'm using. I, I, they, they actually can now because now there exists the glass which can be outdoors, and so I can. I'm making now. I'm producing now some, some glass. Some uh, flowers can be outside. Uh, yes. Great to hear. Yes. 
Yeah, and this is this is again back back into, you know, I am I'm not sometimes I actually I'm free spirit I guess, and I'm doing what I want to do, what I like to do at the moment. Sometimes I'm more into uh, organic shape. And sometimes I like to be I like to be more into into, into geom geometrical work. It also depends where I am. If I'm in, in the city, I, I like to travel. You know, it's uh, archi I love architecture, uh, skyscrapers, uh, modern architecture, and uh, and then it it it, it, it um, you can see it in some of the larger scale of work influence of that. And then sometimes it's pure nature. Beautiful. So this is a great collection, great visual experience you're sharing with us. <laughs> this is this is actually one of, because I first time when I when we really uh, this is got, I said okay let's polish it completely and then suddenly I was like wow what's going on inside <laughs> sometimes it's surprising this is more again from my plant my garden my flower experience yeah. Wonderful. That's the glass, which it depends what kind of light you use. Here we are, here I am back into more like reflection. Reflection and working working with uh, uh, with uh, uh, optical qualities of glass because then yeah, then I'm working with reflections and how it uh, yeah, the reflections and it changes the changing that would be i think experience of uh, the influence i don't know if i would say influence but when i'm working with optical glass of course i i really love the work of mr Tegler. he's I, I think he's fantastic in what he's doing and um, of course i i love work of professor Lipinski, but there are some young artists now here also who are doing some quite nice amazing work not only that, but also I, I, I love also uh, uh, Anish Kapoor glass. I like um, uh, well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Saint Clair Saint work. You know, there are there are other artists I really admire who are not they are not working in glass. I can see. This is a beautiful piece called Metamorphosis, or, or something like that. Materialization, Materialization yeah. right? And it's a gorgeous work in the in the mm -hmm. show, and there's a video of this piece too. We have we can show to people too as well. I think I got stuck. Let's okay, see, Let's see if I kick it forward. Uh oh, no! Are you completely frozen out? Oh. I go ahead and stop sharing and fix it. That was a, a wonderful collection of images, Vladimir. Thank you for putting that together. And I'm sure uh, Matthias helped you <laughs> create that uh, that great presentation. So let me see if you guys are still even here. I think they might have zipped out of here. We haven't even seen um, the other half of the presentation. So hopefully they'll be back in a second. Um, if anybody has any questions about that work, feel free to ask me. I saw someone ask the question about the influences and Vladimir studied under Professor Levinsky for many, many, many years. And that's a lot of her influence from. And, and I see Ferd's here nodding at me. Yes, Ferd, you're welcome to unmute yourself and join in the conversation as we wait for them to, to return to the, uh, the presentation. So it looks like they zipped out. I'm gonna shoot them an email again saying, coming back to the talk would be great. Can you hear me, Aaron? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say, and you may not know this, but uh, we had her first exhibition. I think it was the first exhibition in the United States. It was certainly the first one at Habitat in 1989 in our Chicago gallery. And the gallery burnt down. And all of the work was lost that uh, she had made. Everything was lost. Wow. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm reticent to bring that up to her because it's not exactly a great <laughs> memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Can you guys see us? Sorry about that. All Go. right, you're back. Woohoo! Worried about you guys for a second. <laughs> right. See if we can get back on track here. Um, yep, you're for a little bit ahead on the slides, but go ahead and click it and click forward. Oh, oh, uh, okay. 
and just uh, once you get it going, to zip forward a little bit. Okay. Are we here or? Yep, we can see you guys. You're back in business. Oh, uh, okay. So here we, go. we we had okay. we had Ferd covered for you guys. He did a great job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> No, I don't think it's stuck anymore. Yeah, fun. Can you kick to the next one? Let's see if you can get it going. There we go. All right, you can see the detail. This is the depth in the glass. You can see it from the other side. The color becomes stronger because the the glass is thicker, and it's it's amazing. The that I remember this piece. This piece was sold through Habitat this too. This is another piece similar to this one. It's from the same series of work, and you can see here I was really playing with the hue of the color. Uh, it was it was. Uh, yeah. That was in the Glass 48 presentation. It found a home. Beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. Here is a, it is a series of works where the second one actually is a bronze piece. And I was very curious how it can hold you know, the same shape uh, the, with the different material. And then, some, then it was inspiration. Sometimes I start with smaller. And then if I like it, I, I enlarge it into a, like six foot piece, tall piece. This is a, another variation from the series. Here I was working a little bit with, with the texture inside of the, of the piece. Not only the shape, but also I was playing with the, with the technique. Te with the, it was a little bit going back into what I was doing a long time ago when I was starting in, in, in Massachusetts with my glass. And here is again, I'm working with, uh, I was working with this, with this uh, so organic set, but I was, I, I make it as a, as a large scale piece, which is, you know, when you have a small apartment, if you make it in a, in, a, in this, this tall, it has a completely different presence, that piece. Here's a combination of organic and, uh, and uh, texture. texture of, uh, of, of geometric of, of the rhythm of the pattern being used from for the for the construction building building and here I was I was I thought okay here I'm going to use it clear that shape same similar shape but I was focusing on the again on the color and shape and rhythm and and Playfulness and at the same time is 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 in the form very strict form. This piece is a masterpiece. It's, it's incredible. And it's really hard to, it's a, it's a, to see it's, the scale without seeing it live. But it's, it's not. It's not. It's it's. I have to say that actually the guys in the studio, of course, this one was being cut by by one of our people. It's it's a it hit from his side also. It's a, to make it to cut it to polish it. It was a lot of work. Got a quick oh, this question. is my my autumn autumn series. <laughs> I was it's my latest work. I was doing I was playing now with the uh, end of my garden. <laughs> uh -huh, interesting. Um, I got a question. Are your larger pieces made from a single mold? Oops. It is made from a single mold. Yes. Yeah. And most uh, all. All the molds are being destroyed then because you know it's like like these large pieces they are it's it's uh, I make it it's, again I start all over again with each piece because I have to make it out of clay then dig dig out the clay and then you know make One, a mold and the mold is being destroyed so how many kilns do you guys have? Well, we have one small smaller here. We have like one one meter here. by one meter and then. Uh, one and a half meters by one and a half. And, the, and this large one, like two, two, and yeah. this large, large scale, like for this, this two meters, which is almost two meters long, then I'm passing it in another other piece of studio. And then, so it's a casting studio. And then bringing it to the cold shop. They are dedicating only to casting. You know? it's, like, it's like a little studio for casting. Very beautiful, beautiful presentation. I see we're moving now. Let's jump, yeah, let's do it. My round. And, <laughs> um, I uh, I just tell you a little bit because it's a little bit shorter and you won't understand it if I don't give you a little bit of a, what this photo means, for example. Um, this was actually because I studied graphic design in San Francisco and then had the opportunity to come to the Czech Republic and study at the art school here. And 
while I was here, I, I, I really didn't think I was going to end up in glass, to be uh, honest. Um, but while I was here, I, um, I fell in love with doing something with my hands again. Um, being on the screen and working a mouse became very mundane. And so we, uh, I became part of this Moan project, which was a design project with glass, which was really interesting. And so I was thinking, okay, I'm going to be a kind of design, designing kind of glass. And it was really interesting because we were working with a lot of traditional Czech glass cutters. And it was, uh, and this is one of the pieces I made. And I was fascinated in doing like designs and knives. And then um, I made it. Uh, a couple pieces at school, as you'll see. Uh, and I went from Prague to living here for pretty much a, a while. So <laughs> kind of a... <laughs> this is funky building our studio here now. And so this is one of the first pieces I did. And I, I did it at school and then cast it uh, at my mom's studio. And it, I, it, I don't know, it kind of became a love affair, love and hate affair, but sometimes really glass can be really difficult um, and then I started to kind of play with it more and it was kind of a hobby and then it kind of then became my whole life um, and I grew up with it but you know it's, you have to do it to kind of and understand I always, it. I always actually I, I, never, I really didn't want them to be in glass to, to work in glass. I was I, I thought yeah, I it never, was really was hard never. work really difficult. I, I, I thought like Mm -hmm. But now I'm so happy that it's working. And like then this was kind of a reaction to this kind of cut glass that we have been doing with this uh, MOM uh, design project where uh, I cast through something and then I wanted to try to use this traditional cutting technique, um, which is very interesting, but it's very limited to the size because once you have something that's, you know, 50, 50 pounds, you can't hold it over the wheel because they use a stone. They still use like the traditional stone cutting, uh, these stone diamond wheels, and so this is a uh, this is me kind of playing with this, and I I really wish actually I just returned from doing a piece right now that uh, has this these cuts in it, the small piece, but um, I need to still try to figure out how I could you know make bigger pieces with this technique because it's. I mean, one, one way it's fading um, from, it's kind of disappearing. So it's really nice to really, tradition. yeah, this tradition of cutting. Um, so there's very few people now that can actually do it. Um, I can't do it. This is, this is um, more of a design, kind of design sculpture. I, I would do the, and then I went into these pieces, which for me were um, trying to get an understanding of, of hues and and colors and how how you know when you're thin it does this um, and then when you polish it will become darker so it does like the opposite to give you the idea of a scale and and with these I really started I would start to be full time um, in glass and then um, again it's uh, also like uh, for example with red colors uh, the casting process is completely different than with um, with uh, red or blues or, or crystals because you have to open the kiln and cool the glass really quickly um, before, because if not, it goes, it, yeah, it's an inning temperature, because it, then it goes into, it turns into like a, we call it like a liver color, it goes into this brown. Um, and parallel to that, I have to, I was doing these little animals <laughs> for laughing at this because they're so stupid. But uh, but I, I, I you know it's kinda of similar to that I like to you know I want to do something uh, not only your um, organic forms but sometimes it's fun to play around. Um, and and also learn how to do different techniques because for example with some of these animals, especially the one at the end, <laughs> uh, you you have to use uh, you know you use the lost wax technique. So there's a learning experience. This one's actually uh, the Imago Museum, this little guy. He's, mm. he's a little fennec. Um, but those, it, it's, uh, I like to switch it up sometimes. You know, go, it's a little bit of real, real, real surrealism. <laughs> um, but so 
Here's another little bulldog. And you'll see here how the glass changes with the color. So it's always, you're kind of always uh, with it with the light. So under like a LED light, it'll be, a normal light will be kind of a brown and reddish. And then under LED light, it'll change because it has a little bit of, I think it's uranium in it, that acts and you see so it's the same piece, different light, different color. Um, and so this, these are just kind of fun. We have a friend who uh, has has these little these Scottish terriers, so we uh, I made a couple for for him. Um, but it's fun to to switch it up. Um, it's kind of uh, I think it's important to try new things and not only be focused on one thing. At least for me, because uh, you you then realize something new in the process that then helps you move um, with the with the kind of main focus that you do but um, and and that this is kind of the learning curve and then I started to really we started to make this new studio and have this big kiln and I would have this amazing opportunity to one work with my mother and also be around, uh, you know, these guys who are masters at what they do and in their in their kind of area of form making. And uh, so now now I could start doing larger format things and have that kind of confidence and um, availability uh, with this bigger kiln and and a shop where you can just really go out and play around and. This is this is these are these are now and much larger pieces and they really have different weight and it's, it's been a it's been a lot more fun um, and you know, this is uh, all this inside was done with hand polishing mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know you lose your fingernails <laughs> uh, but when it's finished it's uh, that's the magic of hot glass for me. You know, hot glass when you're when you're doing hot glass, it's, it's, uh, it's so mesmerizing, and I feel like um, uh, cast glass until it's not completely finished and polished, and, and uh, then it's not it's not pretty. You know, it really, <laughs> it really pops out at you in the end. Uh, and so I've been, yeah, just. This is it, trying to uh, playing with reflections as well, you know, experiment, experimenting with the material and trying to push, push it somewhere else. Um, and also giving it homage for what it is, you know, it's, it's hard to, to, to not do like geometric and, and then for example, here on the left, it, that's called Icarus. And that was also, uh, it was, it was a piece where half of the kiln actually stopped working. So half of the piece uh, melted, but didn't completely melt. And then the other half, so I called it Icarus for that reason. <laughs> you got too too close to the sun and his, his wings melted. <laughs> right. And so now I also do, you know, from Mexico, there's uh, subconsciously, there's a lot of, uh, in the area we grew up, it's all about math. So I was always, Kind of fascinated by masks, and I started to to do a little side series of these masks. I think glass is such a great material for masks because it's so hard to put them on the wall sometimes. <laughs> uh, on the face. Yeah, or on the face. <laughs> but these are these are some of these uh, masks that I've been working on on the side, um, and I would like to have like at least fifteen of them before before I really kind of show them anywhere, but. It's nice. Uh, it's they're really nice. I like them. And here I really start to kind of combine the organic with with. I was, I'm really inspired by water. I mean, I always have been. Water has been this kind of obsession of mine for, and and so these these are heavily influenced by by the elements. Um, and and uh, yeah, so you can see them. It's, uh, these are done by clay and this the the. It's tricky with this textures because you, the yeah, this is the clay model. Um, getting the clay out after is really the, the tricky part. Um, uh, there's different.
different ways you can do them. Uh, you have to. You, sometimes you can't you can't get it out, and then you have these clay parts. To, and beautiful. And, yeah, it's, it's, Look at that texture. And, uh, it's more and more doing these kind of the, the texture. It's, I'm trying to more and more feel the weight. This is just the light. So this is at night. You can see how then like the inner world starts to play. Um, uh, try to feel the gravity of the water, you know, pulling you down and trying to be able to to interpret that, to show that. And so sometimes it's more abstract. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward what it is. Um, but you'll see this, this piece here. It's, this is nice because it does, it's when you have it like on a window, it, the crystal really, it takes the colors from everything else around it. Um, and it also plays with this reflection. So if you turn it a little bit, you can maybe see it in this next photo. Uh, you can. And now this is this is a very large piece. It's also, it's starting to starting to get bigger and bigger now. <laughs> I'm getting it's smaller. Getting, smaller. <laughs> it's getting, <laughs> getting bigger. Um, but yeah, it's a patience game a lot of the time. As my mother, this piece broke twice in the casting process. Um, so you know, you can pick yourself up and 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 do do it again. And this is uh, for these for these pieces is also a very tricky mold. It took a took a while. I was like a, trying to figure out how to do that back that back uh, snake shape um, with the piece. You know, it's, it's hard to figure out sometimes how to work the negative, the positive, and then the negative, and then the positive space again because you're going back and forth between them to be able to produce something. Um, and there's a lot of steps to, to being able to get there. Um, and, but then you get this, you know, so it's fantastic. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. It's definitely it's, worth it. Yeah, definitely worth it. Yeah, you know, it's, um, these works but, look, these look, these works look very substantial. And I, I understand why you need your back to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need <laughs> back and you need help. You can't, I really can't, um, and so when we had the small kilns and, and and you know now as i said now it's a lot more it's a lot more fun because you can really experiment now that we have the studio uh and this capability to kind of do these and this was actually a commission piece that was really small and it was this awesome opportunity to be able to bank or really this is one uh one meter so it's four feet by four feet um and uh, because of this piece, I'm now able to I have this ideas of making like a topographical kind of unit, yeah series of hmm. uh, kind of satellite shots on and and um, and and this is uh, well it's a wave, but I miss the ocean so much, <laughs> so I wanted to bring it a little bit closer to me. And this is a banyas glass, and this glass. This is the glass that changes uh, from a forest green to like an aqua blue to crystal through all these hues, depending on the type of light of the day, um, which is really, it's, it's, a, it's, it's so cool to have um, a glass that can do that. Um, so it's, it's very nice to, to watch it change throughout the day. Um, and then this is the dog. This is a little bit bigger than the other guys. And this is my last project that I'm working on right now. Um, and as I said, when we, uh, when we were making the form, we, for the form, you, you saw in the video, like the different, yeah, so this, is, this isn't wax. So we're gonna skip. This is the, the face that's all for, so bubbles don't get in. It took, uh, it was 20 times, 20, it's like four, six times, like, 400 liters? No, that's too much. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah 400 liters of, of plaster to fill it up. It's, uh, this weighed maybe one ton This when it was wet, this form. And so, and now this is where, this is filled with the wax um, model. model. And so what you do now is that you have to, you heat up water 
and you put these pipes in and you melt the wax out. It's the lost wa wax technique. Um, and as I said, so for this piece, for example, has to dry for maybe two and a half months because if the, kit, if the model isn't perfectly dry, then you you uh, won't get clean glass. You get bubbly glass, um, okay. and and it also breaks because it doesn't. And so this is what you're left with is this hole. And now we flip it over and you put it in the kiln, and now you stack it. And here's the here it came out. Um, ready to be cut and polished. Um, so it was a day of celebration when this happened. And so now you can see it cleaned up and now I'm gonna dig into it uh, with the polishers and we have to cut it with a hydraulic saw. And, and yeah, so hopefully you guys will see that soon. <laughs> great, well, thanks for, uh, for both presentations. Will you stop sharing your screen? So yeah, can see sure. everybody would be great. And I wanted to thank you both for uh, uh, doing this today. That was that was an amazing experience to see a, a variety of your talents. Uh, Vladimir, for your long career, and, and Matthias, as your, your talent explodes. <laughs> you know, you're kind of, you have a real great, uh, with your mother and your experience, jumping into what your career. So I know you've been working for a while and you're really pushing the medium. So thank you both for being here. Um, uh, this is a great time for anybody to have any questions and, uh, and to joining us. And I appreciate you guys all being here and joining uh, me today for this Habitat Now. And I'm honored to have both Thank of you. Here. So uh, if, if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself or else feel free to unmute yourself and say uh, goodbye or uh, hello or a little bit of both. Because uh, it's I'm, great seeing you. I just wanted to say uh, sure. to, to, to Vladimir and Madison, thank you. Their work is fabulous and so are they. Lovely and charming and incredibly creative. And I want to say thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Judy. Thank you. Thank you. Can That's I great, ask guys. a question here? Sure, Howard, jump in. Um, Mateus and Vladimir, would you mind um, typing in the chat some of those artists that you said are influencing you today um, and the other Czech artists that you really admire? Um, some of the newer artists? Or yeah. I think you managed, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Anish Kapoor yeah. and... Um, uh, I, I, I really like from, from the young ones. I think the, the Man Vanunka Parhalova. Yeah, maybe write, we'll write it down. We'll write it down. Yeah, yeah. she's doing yeah. some really, really I cool really things. I really like her work, yeah. Um, Thank you. Um, I will, I will yeah, write it down. Write it down. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can always email it to me guys too late and I'll forward it off. I'll, 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 I'll email to you, yeah. yeah. That'll, be, yeah. that'll be great. Cool. Yeah. Well, I want to... Me. Sure. Glad me. Hello? Hey, we can hear you. Glad Glad it's yeah. Malcolm. Well, um, are you when you say you're polishing the dogs are you now moving away from the rough um motif that you've used for years to where they're going to actually be much uh, very very smooth and clear and with pets depending on the light cl uh, clear glass He's saying, are they going to be more, are they going to be more smooth? Is that for, that's for my mom. For, that's for me or for Matthias? I think that's for Matthias. Oh, um, well, that's something, that's what something that's kind of uh, up in the air right now, because now that I have the dog, um, the minute that you start grinding and polishing in there, then you have to either completely go smooth or, or, you know, always, but so it's, it's, again, it's a, the decision that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I have to see it. So this is something that I'm, I'm gonna work on. Uh, work on. I'd love to do a, I'd love to do a, a completely smooth um, dog, um, but it's, it's also, it's very demanding to be able to do that. I mean, technically. So it's, it's uh, something that. I think I, I first need to see what, what I can, now I'm going to see how, what the surface is going to work like now. Um, uh, also, there's different techniques, like, for example, like sandblasting, I'm going to try. So it's going to be a bit of an experiment with this, with this, with this dog. Uh, I hope that helps a little bit. Um, that, make, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. You'll figure it out as you go. 
you're learning. Oh, well, is, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be um, because, I mean, frankly, I'm a little surprised they even got this far with this piece. <laughs> 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 uh, so, so, um, so super exciting. Um, uh, and I want to actually, for this particular dog, because she's a little bit Egyptian, um, she has a little bit of this Egyptian kind of pose, uh, I want to gold leaf his, 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 uh, his tail with the traditional gold, gold leafing. Um, to give him a little, we call it check, spark. <laughs> gotcha. Well, thank you guys. Any other questions for the group from the group? Myra, you, I go ahead, Myra. Thank you, Mo, and wonderful presentation. Enjoyed it all. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Vladimir. And thank you all. And I wish you all a happy Saturday. Um, both your exhibitions are on the Glass Art Fair site. If should you want to see more, ask me any questions anytime. And I want to well, have you have a great Saturday, and we'll talk more soon. All right, guys, and be thank well. Thank you so much, Erin, and thank you so much, everybody, for showing up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Be well. Bye. Bye.